So let's talk just for a minute about the other option for downloading your caches, which is to use uh, one of my servers, which I provide uh, at no cost for that purpose. And uh, if you choose that option, you'll see a screen which looks like this. It's somewhat different than the other screen. Starting at the top, one of the first things you'll need is an account ID, and it comes pre-filled uh, by default with demo at email.com. You need to uh, edit that and change that to a valid email address to which you have access because I'm going to send you some further instructions at that email address. So it needs to be a, a legitimate email address. I do not use those email addresses for any other purposes, nor do I sell those lists. You need not worry about that from a privacy point of view. Uh, so you know you can use whatever email address you want and be assured that I'm, I'm it's not going to get out uh, at least not from um, my using it uh, other than to uh, send you some information uh, about iGeocache or in, in rare cases I might contact you about some important change that's being made but other than that uh, uh, that email address will never be used for any other purpose all you have to do is uh, put in that email address and click on the get ID button here and uh, now in this case it's telling you that this happens to be a demonstration account. It'll do one of two things. It will tell you that the account has been added or if you happen to click it again uh, and you've already registered once it'll come up and let you know that. So just read the message that you see in the following screen carefully and once you see that it's, our, it's registered you don't have to do it again. The iPhone server URL you shouldn't have to change at all. Uh, it's uh, pre-filled in for you uh, as shown here. Once again, you have five clear buttons uh, for clearing the five groups. They're arranged just a little bit differently here. And there's a little bit of a difference uh, in, in the, the way that you actually load caches. Uh, when you go to my website, to actually, uh, uh, and you'll get the instructions for this at that email address uh, that you put in above, and use simple gpx.cfm, you actually nominate the caches, uh, the group that uh, you're going to put the uh, file in, uh, at the time of upload, uh, it's a little bit different, and this goes back to the legacy iGeocacher app for compatibility. But uh, in any case, if you wanted to clear out the particular group on your local database prior to downloading from the from my servers, you can do that here with these clear buttons. And uh, there's only one download because you've already uh, pre-specified the grouping on the upload, the group that you want to go in. Or you can clear the entire database here with this button. And again, these do the same thing as the clear buttons that you saw on the other screen. Now, there are some memory issues with downloading large um, uh, GPX files. And for that reason, on my server, uh, if you have some really, really large files that you need to, to uh, download, you can do that uh, by using um, this facility to set the chunk size. The default is 500 caches, which corresponds to a pocket query maximum and also is a pretty good number. Some people with more verbose caches, especially those in the uh, in Europe, which which uh, tend to have a lot of log entries. Um, can't get 500 before they run out of memory. Now the good news is if you happen to have one of the new 3GS phones that has twice the memory in it as the prior models, uh, you will probably not have memory issues or uh, in downloading caches. I've downloaded well over, uh, I've downloaded GPX files with well over um, 2,000 caches in them uh, in a single file. But nonetheless, if you have those kinds of issues and you're loading very, very large files, what you can do is go ahead and click on that download and it will load uh, up to 500 caches and then you can click on download again it remembers where you are and it'll load the next batch so let's say you had a file that you uploaded that had uh, 750 caches in it the first time through it'll get you'll see it load 500 caches and it'll scroll across five times 100 caches a piece here in progress you click on download again and it will get the remaining 250 caches whereupon it starts over again uh, at the beginning so you can um, do that uh, once again however you have a download mode here and this is the same as we explained in the other video you can add you can add as finds you can merge you can merge as finds and uh, you get the same kind of behavior that we talked about uh, in the other uh, video and I won't repeat here but uh, certainly in add mode it would be problematic if you reloaded the uh, same set of caches because you'd get duplicates all you're doing is duplicating the rows that you add in the database and there's no deletion of similar cache ID rows prior. 
uh, if you only want one copy of the cache in, the latest copy that you're downloading, then you need to use one of the merge modes because merge will delete based on the uh, the uh, GCID, the uh, geocaching ID, prior to inserting the new cache from the um, GPX file. And that pretty much describes how you load things uh, on the iPhone server uh, if you choose to use that. So feel free to use e either method, your own server or PC or the iPhone server.